So I've come out to the deck because here, Blue Coat Books and Colin to talk about something that fascinates me twice over because I love books and I love photography. Tell us about Blue Coat Books. Well, Blue Coat has been going for about, getting on for 30 years now, publishing a lot of books, but increasingly I just specialise in photography and particularly in photojournalism. British photographers over the last 50, 60 years, um, some who are no longer with us, but most of them are still practising photographers like Peter Dench, um, photographers like that, who got um, a particular way of recording how we, I say the British, most of them are English, but how we the British behave and uh, uh, our society in general. So in terms of uh, the photographers and their approach and what they like to what they like to photograph and what they like to uh, portray. Do you have a kind of would it, if somebody opened a book and it was a blue coat book, would they know that it was a blue coat book because of the photographs in there? No, they don't know it's a blue coat book because of the price. They're all nineteen pound ninety nine, so that's the reason they know it's a blue coat book. But no, I mean the range of photographs in them are. I mean from Someone like Peter Dench, who's modern, very raw, uh, using, uses flash a lot, full colour, to uh, photographers like John Bulmer, who his career was mainly in the 1960s and early 70s, and he worked for people like the Sunday Times, The Observer, a whole range of um, magazines, and he was a pioneer in early the early use of colour in photography, so probably far more subtle, uh, a different kind of photography, so I mean... I look for um, photographers who have a, a narrative, something to say about our society, and who obviously produce stunning images. And uh, you know, choosing those kind of photographers who uh, I think work and uh, you know just get them published. And their style and their approach uh, and the way that they uh, portray their subject matter that all differs between oh, the photographers. Totally, totally. I mean, the way Peter Dench works. Is entirely different from how somebody like um, Patrick Ward was. Patrick is an observer of uh, English customs and events, so he goes to things like the boat race, all different kinds of events to record them, but from a kind of a slightly humorous, sort of nostalgic, possibly way. Whereas I think the other photographers are far more aggressive in their approach. But that doesn't stop me valid commentaries on our society or you know, how it is or how it was. Now, these days, I know a lot of uh, photographers sort of complain that everybody's got a camera because everyone's got a camera on their phone. Not only that, their phone and their computers and their pads are ways of displaying and archiving and sharing photographs. How does that fit in with your role of providing paper uh, or providing books of photography? Well, I think there's been a kind of a... I see change in how people see photographs. I mean, as you said, everyone's got a camera now and um, everyone can take photographs. And the vogue at the moment is for what's called photo books, to be short. I mean, Martin Parr has popularised the concept of a, a photo book through uh, various publications of his. And a lot of people, especially young people, see a photo book as being a, a product, a physical product. The internet's brilliant, you can search for anything, find images all over the place, but at the end of the day, it's a physicality. It's rather like a, um, how um, vinyl has made a comeback. It's a, the physicality, having something that actually has, you can feel, it's tangible, and you can smell, turn the pages. It's an entirely different thing to the internet, and I mean, the internet's absolutely fantastic because it disseminates images worldwide, but at the end of the day, I like to think that a book has got some kind of a tangible quality to it that uh, um, has kind of a lasting, sort of in my case, hopefully a lasting legacy that these will be around in 50 years' time, you know, yeah. and will be referred to as, you know, a, a, a useful source of information on photographs. So I, I, I see it as a kind of a, a growing market. It's a difficult market because so many books are now coming out. People are self-publishing. Um, it's very easy now for anybody to book a book together and run up 10, 15, 20 copies, you know, or, or whatever. So the market is actually quite flooded with photo books. Some are good, some are bad. 
and it's trying to work your way through how to not just produce a book but how to sell them and that's a difficult equation nowadays. Yeah. Now we're talking about books, you're talking about good and bad books uh, and I'm sure there are things like layout uh, and the quality of the photography but to get really in depth and talk about books as photo books, is there a different publishing printing process is there something that you're when you're getting a book published is there anything technically that you need to do to make it work as a photo book as compared to a book that is uh, printing text oh yeah there, there, there's an awful lot I mean I come through experience I say I've been doing publishing books for 30 years and you learn an awful lot obviously I mean the first criteria is to actually get good design I mean I pay professional designers to design the books and that what makes a big difference choosing the right fonts, the right layout that's the starting point the second point is obviously to choose images that can reproduce high enough resolution to look good but especially if you're doing black and white I always print what's called duotone which is using black with a second colour and getting that right is important there's a lot of sort of technicalities but at the end of the day, I mean, a platform like Blurb and other things, self-publishing platform, which are digital rather than mine, which is live that printed, which is more traditional way. And the quality is fantastic. I mean, if you get all the elements right and have a good photo book at the end of the day, that's great. I mean, I, I just use my experience uh, mainly to get them done. I mean, I, I print in quantity, so I mean, I my normal print runs at least a thousand, usually two thousand, so um, I, I'm concerned with things like getting unit costs right, because if I'm retailing, I've got to allow for retailers' margins and things like that. So, as I say, it's a difficult market, but um, increasingly things like uh, HIP and things like that here are possibly the markets of the future, where you are selling books at photo shows rather than through yeah. um, bookshops, because the bookshops are still quite rapidly disappearing and we have to find other ways of selling yeah and now you know there are a couple of novels that I've reread a few times how many times do you reckon you can look at a photo book again and again well that depends I've got books that I refer to all the time um, and I've got other books that are in the shelf and have not opened since I bought them I mean I'm a, I'm a sucker for buying photo books but I, I buy them for Probably professional reasons. I, I buy them to look at layout, for look, for printing, uh, and also for ideas. And sometimes you buy a book, look at it, get what you can from it all, and put it on a shelf, and uh, you're probably exhausted. But there are other books I refer to all the time, and uh, um, I can think of one or two now. I mean, I've bought in the uh, last few months. I mean, Leica have just brought out a book of their 100 Years of Leica, and it's just full, jam packed full of ideas and layouts and spreads and I'll be going back to that time and time and time again I know that yeah. well uh, I'm going to let you get off because I can see there's a customer there <laughs> and I've also got to decide what I'm going to be spending my 1999 on as well oh, so thank yes. you very much Colin thank you pleasure